Hardy.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Will you please rise and join Christopher Dietering in the singing of our national anthem and remain standing for the invocation by Pastor Robert Wiesner. Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all our sons command. With glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true north strong and free. From far and wide, O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Creator God, it is with grateful hearts that we gather here this afternoon. Be with us and among us at this convocation. Help us to celebrate the accomplishments of these fine students who are graduating today. Be with them and their family and friends as they share in the joy of this achievement. Let us remember and give thanks for the commitment and dedication of staff, faculty, administration, and the Board of Governors of this college. Bless these proceedings and instill in each of us that spirit which alone brings goodness, truth, and wisdom to our world. Creator of all, hear us and be with us now in all we do. Amen. Thank you, Pastor uh, Wiesner. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Welcome to the Loyalist College of Applied Arts and Technology 2013 Convocation. My name is John McMahon, and as Vice President Academic, it is my pleasure to act as Master of Ceremonies for this afternoon's exercises. Uh, before we begin, I would ask that you check to ensure that phones and other electronic devices are turned off until the conclusion of the ceremony. In the event of a fire alarm, your exit routes are located behind me, through the doors on my left, and the doors at the back of the auditorium. Follow the exit signs out of the college. Once outside, proceed to move away from the building. As well, should there be an emergency response, please follow the instructions being provided. This afternoon, we are recognizing graduates from the School of Human Health and Justice Studies. Interpreting this morning's ceremony, or this afternoon's ceremony, is Heidi Taus. Today's convocation ceremony will be simulcast in Alumni Hall, located downstairs on the first floor. I would remind the graduates that they are to return to their seats once they have received their diplomas or certificates until convocation is completed as a courtesy to others. We understand that some of you may wish to take a picture of your graduate at the eventful moment. If you do, I ask that at the appropriate time, you go by way of the back of the hall, down the side aisle to your left, and wait in the alco alcove on this side of the wall so that you are not obstructing the view of other members of the audience. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you Stuart Wright, Chair of the Board of Governors, who will officially open convocation. Thank you, President McMahon, Vice President McMahon, promoted him. It, uh, it's my pleasure to uh, officially declare the 46th Convocation of Loyalist College officially opened. And on behalf of the Board of Governors, I welcome each and every one of you to this wonderful occasion 
and uh, to extend a special welcome to our distinguished guest of honor, Mr. David McKinnon. And to you, our graduates, the Loyalist College class of 2013, today is your day. We celebrate your achievement with you. We're gathered together to uh, celebrate the awarding of Loyalist College certificates and diplomas and those receiving these documents today have every right to feel exceedingly proud of their accomplishment and to enjoy the recognition of their success from family and friends because what you have achieved here at Loyalist provides you the key to open the door of a most wonderful future. You didn't do it alone. Your family and friends supported you, but also uh, the, board of, the Board of Governors of Loyalist College is exceptionally proud of the academic staff of Loyalist College who taught you on a day-in, day-out basis. You were, you were privileged to deal with a remarkable group of professionals, and I hope you appreciate and understand that. Today at Loyalist is the culmination of many choices you made beginning with the decision to enroll at Loyalist. You chose your programs, you chose to work diligently when there are many other things that you could have preferred doing, you chose to excel, and now you're about to receive the formal recognition of what you have done at Loyalist. It truly is a wonderful day in your life. I want to share with you, take a brief moment to share with some views on how to best build a future based on your achievement of today. Many of you will now enter the workforce armed with documentation that attests to your skills and knowledge. That documentation gets you in the door. But from then on, your success will rest solely with how you present yourself to your employers. Throughout my career in business, I met countless new graduates as they embarked on their own journey through the corporate world. What I came to understand over time was that those that succeeded all had the same traits in common. They were reliable, hard workers, team players, positive influencers, and they were curious to learn all they could about the organization they worked for. I would commend that same formula to you. Because remember, unless you're independently wealthy, you work because you have to. We work because we need the money to put a roof over our heads, to put gas in the car and food in the fridge. So if you've got to work, enjoy what you're doing and work hard at it and succeed. This allows you to make choices as to where and how you will live. So you have to work, do everything you can to make it a happy and positive experience. Set yourself apart. Be recognized as that loyalist graduate who can be counted on, who's reliable, who's there when they're supposed to be there, who's a role model for other employees, who communicate with your leaders to know exactly what it is they expect from you. Because if you understand what it is they expect, then all you have to do is do it, and you will be successful. If you do all of these things, and you don't necessarily get exactly what you wanted. Remember, life's not fair, but keep working at it. You will succeed. That you're joining a group of Loyalist alumni that number over 35,000, and amongst that group are a very successful group of people who've excelled in a wide range of activities across this region, across the province, across the country, in fact, around the world. Anywhere you go, you'll find a successful Loyalist graduate. And in this great nation, they are populating major businesses and government organizations everywhere. Many of them become significant contributors, contributors to the Loyalist Foundation. This is the financial source that provides deserved, much deserved to support to so many students. And I encourage you also, when you're able, to support the Loyalist Foundation and in that way help other students fulfill their dreams. Well, that's enough for me. I leave you with the thought that now you're about, that you're armed with your Loyalist diploma or certificate. Do all you can to make yourself, your family, and Loyalist proud. You've earned your day, and now it's up to you to use what you've worked so hard to achieve as a member of the graduating class of Loyalist 2013. Thank you.
Thank you, Chair Wright. I would like to call upon President Piercy, who will address the graduates and introduce our speaker for today. President Piercy. Thank you very much, John. Chair Wright, Mr. McKinnon, Pastor Wiesner, members of the board, distinguished guests, loyalist staff, graduating class of 2013, family and friends, good afternoon and welcome. Convocation is the ultimate celebration in the life of Loyalist College. Successful convocations are the results of the efforts and careful preparations of many members of the college who all take great pride in their roles in preparing the campus for today. Special thanks to our Director of Enrollment Services and Registrar, Laura Nauman, and her staff, my office staff, and our Facility Services team, who have worked diligently for the last several weeks to make our campus look wonderful inside and out. The only thing we couldn't control was the weather. They've made an important contribution to your day, as have many others. This has been another, another wonderful year at Loyalist with many highlights to remember and to celebrate. Outstanding awards earned by Loyalist students, faculty and graduates, ongoing develop, developments on our campus with invaluable support from our community partners to help complete and equip the Sustainable Skills Technology and Life Sciences Center. The Skills Center project has earned the Silver Level LEAD certification designating leadership in energy and environmental design and we're very proud of that. As the college moves closer to achieving our capital campaign goal of six million dollars, we acknowledge many municipal and community partners who have helped us with donations of time and talents and resources. Important support for the college is also reflected in a partnership established with the W. Garfield Weston Foundation. The Weston Foundation is working with Loyalist on a pilot project to provide very important student financial assistance for 60 students over the next three years as they undertake studies in skill trades and technology. But the most important highlight of the year, your individual success. Members of the graduating class of 2013, in a few moments you will receive your certificate or diploma. My heartfelt congratulations to each of you. Members of the graduating class, in a few moments you will be awarded your certificate. My, sorry. <laughs> it's important to remember that you have not accomplished this very important life achievement, the attainment of a post-secondary credential, all on your own. Look around. There, as they always have been, are your parents, our dedicated and exceptional loyalist professors and staff, significant others, children, relatives, and friends. I know you haven't been sitting very long, but I'm going to ask the graduating student to join me in giving all those wonderful people who supported you a standing ovation. I'm sure you'll agree they deserve it. So just graduating students, let's give your colleagues a... Thank you. Please be seated again. I hope you all enjoyed that. I know it's uh, very well deserved and uh, we so appreciate your support too. I, I know as a Loyalist grad myself, uh, we, we couldn't do it without the support of family and friends. Graduating students, we are all so proud of you and of course we're here to share your celebration and to wish you continuing success as Loyalist graduates. I encourage you to feel very proud of your accomplishments, your college and the future which lies wide open ahead of you. Feel proud of yourself. As Chair Stewart said, you're joining the ranks of tens of thousands of Loyalist graduates who are making powerful, positive contributions to their families, workplaces, and communities. Feel proud of your college. Thank you for choosing Loyalist. I hope that you will be among the 96% of our grads who would recommend Loyalist to a family member or friend. That's a very high level of trust, and we cherish it. Loyalist is an outstanding college and one way in which we know that for certain is that Loyalist grads never cease to amaze us. When faculty and staff pass on stories of graduate achievement or when grads come back to share their stories with current students, we all feel great excitement for them and great pride. You're joining a family today just as you did when you first came through Loyalist doors. As you head off to your next life adventure, we say, as your family will say, keep in touch. To welcome you to the Loyalist Alumni Family, representatives of our Alumni Association are here today to congratulate you as you leave the stage. Our wonderful alumni publication, 
and we will find your address, is called Lasting Connections. I am confident that you will find, as I have as a Loyalist grad, that your Loyalist connections are links which will endure and strengthen throughout your personal and professional life. And last but not least, feel proud of the awesome potential of the life that lies ahead of you. By earning a post-secondary credential, you have armed yourself with a powerful tool for making a significant difference. We have the privilege of living in this wonderful country with all of its freedoms and opportunities. We each have a responsibility to try to make society better through our involvement and contributions. With the challenges that the world faces today in our environment, our economy, in every arena, your skills and talents are urgently needed. Get involved, be engaged, keep inspiring and challenging us, and keep your skills sharp by becoming a lifelong learner. We will welcome you back at any time. In closing, again, congratulations from all of us. We are so very proud of you, and you should feel deep and well-earned pride in yourself. Each of you has enriched loyalists and us by your presence here. We are confident we will continue to enrich the loyalist story with your accomplishments. Enjoy every minute of this celebratory day, and on behalf of the whole loyalist community, all of our best wishes for a bright, happy, and rewarding future. Thank you. It is now my privilege to introduce our guest speaker for convocation, Mr. David McKinnon. David McKinnon, a retired Ontario public servant and policy critic, is a native of Prince Edward Island and holds a Bachelor of Arts degree, Honours in Economics from Dalhousie University and an MBA from York University. He was awarded a Centennial Fellowship by the Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce and York University to study at York, Harvard and Oxford Universities as well as the European Institute of Business Studies. Mr. McKinnon served as Director, Planning and Economics and Executive Director, Development Strategy in the Nova Scotia Department of Economic Development from 1976 to 1981. He later served in several senior capacities in the Ontario Public Service, the Bank of Montreal, as CEO of the Ontario Hospital Association from 1996 to 2003, was President of Ortec Corporation, a contract research organization, and President and CEO of the Ontario Development Corporation. Mr. McKinnon has extensive healthcare governance experience as a public member of the Governing Council of the Ontario College of Physici Physicians and Surgeons and was chair of its finance committee and a member of its executive. He serves on several boards of directors, including Toronto's West Park Health Centre and the Quinty Healthcare Organization. He recently completed a five-year term on the Standards Council of Canada and was subsequently elected to the board of the Canadian Standards Association. He has advised the Ontario Chamber of Commerce and other Ontario chambers and organizations on fiscal federalism issues. Mr. McKinnon and his wife Betsy, who joins David this afternoon, live in Wellington, Prince Edward County. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our guest speaker for convocation, a distinguished Canadian, Mr. David McKinnon. Thank you very much, uh, Maureen, for those very kind words. I should say that um, sometimes I tell a story about how relieved I am to be speaking after lunch rather than before, because um, uh, on one occasion, and this, uh, the person who told me this story alleges it is true, that there was a, a luncheon meeting at which the speaker went on too long and, and interfered and went on too long before lunch was served. And as he droned on and on, the waiter served more and more wine. <laughs> and so he droned on, and the wine came, and finally the inevitable happened. And the gentleman's head fell forward on the table, and a person came up and asked if they could be of assistance. And he said, yes, you can give me another one. I can still hear him. <laughs> so, <laughs> so coming after lunch, you have somewhat less risk of, of all that. But I would like to start by thanking uh, Chairman Wright and President Piercy for the uh, opportunity to speak today. I'd also like to 
thank the uh, staff, many of whom are on my right, for the wonderful role they play. In the healthcare system, you could not run a modern healthcare system without graduates of uh, Loyalist and the other community colleges across Ontario. It couldn't be done. And that is true of most aspects of our society. So thank you very much, uh, particularly to the staff and those who support them for the role they have played in making today possible for all of you. The invitation to speak has helped me learn about Loyalist and its importance to this region. This is a vital institution, an essential part of the fabric of the Quinty region. Uh, I will come back to that theme of the importance of Loyalist later. Over the past few weeks, I've been reading up on convocation speeches to understand what I should do today. And the first responsibility is to be reasonably brief, and I will try to do that. The second responsibility, and in many ways the most important, is to celebrate. To celebrate each graduate, the parents, the spouses, the friends, and as I've already mentioned, the instructors who made this day possible. And I'd like to ask each graduate to reflect on this moment in a special way, to find a special place in your consciousness so that this day is not forgotten and does not ju become just another day like any other. So mark it in your minds. It's important. It's a milestone. The third thing a convocation speaker is expected to say is to a few things based on his or her experience that will be useful to graduates in the decades to come. Now this is the trickiest part of the assignment because graduates already are tech savvy, intelligent, and focused. So I'm only going to talk about a few suggestions from my own life that I do hope you will find useful and I will stop there. Five suggestions and I'll mention them up front before I explore each. They are reinforcing constructive behavior in others in almost all occupations is just as important as what you do yourself. Second, always try to think outside the box because the mental box in which we each live is smaller than we think. Third, dream about what could be and dream big. There's no penalty for big dreams. Four, recognize that sometimes it is healthy to be a bit paranoid. And five, help community, help build community by strengthening our public institutions. And this institution is a very good place to start. I'll start with the importance of empowering others. One of my personal heroes is a gentleman named Felix Rohatton. His life reads like an adventure novel, escaping the Holocaust as a child, fleeing with his family to Brazil, becoming a leader in US finance, US ambassador to France, and much else. He was the chairman of the corporation, a municipal corporation for the city of New York, the body charged with averting insolvency uh, for the city uh, nearly 50 years ago. Now, New York City in the 1960s was in dismal shape. Crime was rampant. Services were awful. The place was filthy and the city's cultural life was fading. And I remember this well. In 1968, I was on a train from Boston to New York and noticed that several windows in a car on which I was traveling were boarded up. Boarded up. The conductor said that was because bullets had gone through the windows in the car and exited on the other side. So when I say that New York really was a desperate place, I'm understating it. It was the Wild West. Mr. Rohatton avoided the insolvency and came up with the financial plans that rejuvenated the city and led to the wonderful metropolis that New York City is today. And years later, he revealed what his secret was. He said that at the time, he was very uncertain about what to do about the city's desperate problems. So he implemented a different strategy. He identified the most creative, the most informed, and the most diligent people connected with the city, 
and gave them all the support he could as they tried to find solutions. His reasoning was that people like this would figure out the city's problems if they were given positive reinforcement. And this example has stuck with me throughout my career and it has certainly worked for me. And I can summarize it very briefly, and I will because it's so important. Sometimes the smartest thing one can do is support others, especially when dealing with complex and serious problems. My second suggestion is to try to think outside the box because the mental boxes in which we live and function are smaller than we think for two major reasons. First, most people associate most often with people like themselves. For example, if you're living a traditional middle-class lifestyle, most of the people one sees each day are similar middle-class people. The result is that most of us seldom really encounter people whose lives and circumstances are dramatically different from our own, and therefore we don't know enough about their thoughts and circumstances. A second reason for the smallness of our mental boxes is the pervasive censorship that surrounds us. Every time YouTube sends you a list of recommended videos, Google is excluding information as well as providing it. It is selecting information for you, and it is making the choice. The same is true for the mainstream media. Sensational stuff sells, so sensational stuff one gets, usually at the expense of ideas and events that are not sensational, even though they may be of vital importance. So that comparative limits on our everyday lives and what we encounter is why living outside one's usual circumstances is so important. And I urge you to travel as much as possible, to read about ideas that are outside the mainstream, and especially to be open to different experiences. And I'll give you just one brief example that made me think about our country and our world in a very different way. Two years ago, my wife and I visited Chongqing, the biggest city on the planet. 32 million people live there, roughly equivalent to the population of Canada. There is no safety net, so entrepreneurship is the sole guarantor of survival for most. Almost everyone lives in 500 square foot apartments and the air is filthy. But there was vibrancy and grittiness, which we came to greatly respect in that city and throughout China. We learned that however wonderful our society is, there are lessons about courage, self-reliance, and an ability to endure that we can learn from street vendors in China and be better for having learned them. I'm conscious of my promise to be brief, so I will deal with my remaining themes as quickly as I can. We must all, as we go through life, I'm sure most of us recognize it, but every so often it's important to remark upon it, we must all be dream dreamers about the future because dreams un about the future underpin all real human achievement. One can express that differently. It is impossible to inspire, aspire to anything without first imagining, dreaming if you will, what the future might be. And I can incorporate that into suggestions for each of you. Let your minds wander. Read biographies. Biographies to me were centrally important to learn about how other people lived, imagined, succeeded, or failed. Now after talking about dreaming, you find, might find my comment about paranoia to be an odd one. <laughs> and perhaps I can give some background. About 15 years ago, I was attending a conference at Intel's headquarters in California. While standing in line at the cafeteria for lunch, I chatted with a most unassuming and friendly person who turned out to be uh, Andrew Grove, one of the founders of Intel and its chairman at the time. We talked for several minutes and later I read up on him. Mr. Grove felt that technology and the environment in which Intel was operating were changing so fast 
that one had to always look over one's shoulder to see where danger and risk lurk. And he was very specific about that. He later wrote a book, and the title encapsulates his thinking. The title is Only the Paranoid Survive. Now, he perhaps exaggerates it a bit. But as you encounter the incredibly high rewards and the risks associated with the emergence of a global economy, I'd like you to remember uh, the title of that book by one of the principal founders of the information age in which we live. My last theme is building communities by strengthening public institutions. Whenever one thinks of a community, go think of what goes through your own mind. The visual images we have of public facilities in that community usually come to the fore. It would be hard to imagine Kingston, for example, without thinking about Queens and City Hall. One can put that another way. Without these two places and institutions, Kingston would be a very diminished place. The same kind of thinking applies to Belleville and Loyalist. In many ways, the face of this community is the distinctive architecture of the Loyalist campus. However, the central role of this college is much more than a matter of appearance. Without Loyalist, the people of this community and the surrounding region would have much reduced access to the skills they need to make their way in the world. And that's pretty serious stuff. However, this college and others like it are seriously challenged. One of the consequences of Canada's problems in Canada's fiscal system is that Ontario taxpayers are so busy funding the institutions and governments elsewhere in the country, including where I come from, that they cannot provide sufficient resources to their own public institutions, including this one. Loyalist and the other community colleges in Ontario have the least per capita funding of all provinces in Canada. I'd like you to think about that. Just think of it. The province that has done so much for the rest of Canada for so long is reduced to last in terms of funding it can provide to vital institutions such as this. Aside from encouraging Ontario's federal leaders to come to their senses on this issue, there are things we can do. We can support funding campaigns. We can volunteer to serve in different capacities. As the uh, chairman has, a volunteer chair is a wonderful role to play in uh, the future uh, of this province. We can, local businesses can provide more and improve training opportunities. But perhaps most of all, we can tell our legislators that we really need to improve the skills training policies we now have. The demographics of the skilled trades in this province and Canada as a whole spell disaster unless we pick up the pace. We are really wrong if we think we can scour the world looking for immigrants to fix the aging problems of our skilled workforce. We would be far better to advise, uh, be far better advised to strengthen our own institutions and to provide better and more modern educational opportunities to our own citizens, especially those who are young, like many of our graduates today, and those who face very challenging economic conditions. So there it is, five messages, and I hope they are helpful to you. I wish the graduates, but I wish all others connected with uh, the college, good luck in the years to come. And as someone who has sailed for much of his life, I hope you encounter, I hope all the graduates encounter much sunshine and fair winds. Thank you very much. Well, I'd certainly like to thank David McKinnon for joining us on this special occasion and delivering what really is a memorable address to the graduating class of 2013. I'm also pleased to announce that the Board of Governors, by virtue of the authority invested in it, has authorized me to award Mr. McKinnon the highest tribute of Loyalist College, an honorary diploma in applied arts and technology in recognition of his outstanding contribution as CEO of the Ontario Hospital Association for his important advocacy as a leader in the public and private sectors. 
Loyalist College is truly privileged to have David McKinnon address Convocation 2013 and accordingly pays him its highest academic tribute. I would now like to invite President Piercy and Sarah Cole to join me. President Piercy, in 1873, the Earl of Dufferin, Governor General of Canada, had a medal struck to reward scholastic merit. This medal has four levels, gold for the master or doctoral level of study, silver for the bachelor level, of study, collegiate bronze for post-secondary, and bronze for secondary education. The collegiate bronze medal from the Governor General of Canada is presented to the student in a two or three year college program with the highest cumulative average. This year, the award goes to Sarah Cole from the School of Health, Human and Justice Studies and the Community and Justice Services Program who graduated with a cumulative average of 97.93%. Sarah, Sarah is a graduate of St. Paul Catholic Secondary School in Quinty West, and after 10 years working in the service industry, returned to school to pursue the Community and Justice Services program. Sarah is a single mom, raising two daughters, Vera Lynn and Noel, who are also here today to see their mother graduate and to receive this honor. Despite maintaining a full-time job during her two years attending Loyalist, and looking after her family, Sarah was rarely absent from class. Faculty members who had the privilege of having Sarah in their class shared that she always had a very positive attitude and pleasant manner in and out of the classroom. Her sense of humor added to the classroom environment. She had an excellent work ethic and great insight into the program materials. Sarah was not afraid to ask tough questions or challenge ideas to gain a deeper understanding of the material. She challenged faculty to be at their best. Sarah's program placement hosts Hastings Prince Edward Mental Health Services and St. Paul Catholic Secondary School provided glowing praise and recommendations on Sarah's performance and abilities. Sarah put her whole heart into coming back to school and contributed extensively to the classroom environment and the results certainly show that. President Piercy, please join me in congratulating Sarah Cole as this year's recipient of the Governor General's Academic Award. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the formal part of our ceremony where the certificates and diplomas and awards will be presented. President Piercy, it is my privilege to report to you that the candidates here assembled have qualified in all respects for certificates, diplomas, by successfully completing curricula offered by the School of Human Health and Justice Studies at Loyalist College. They have been recommended by the faculty to be awarded certificates or diplomas in recognition of their academic accomplishments. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Governors of Loyalist College, I do hereby confer on our graduates their respective certificates and diplomas, 
with all the honors, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. President Piercy, on behalf of the graduates not present, I request that you confer their diplomas and certificates in absentia. I so do. Ladies and gentlemen, Karen Brooks Cathcart, Dean of the School of Human Health and Justice Studies, will oversee the conferring of diplomas. During the next, next part of the program, we will be presenting the graduates who will proceed across the stage to receive congratulations from the President and from a member of the Board of Governors. In order that we can clearly hear everyone's name, we ask your cooperation in withholding your applause until each group has been presented. A reminder that those taking photographs are asked to use the designated area to the left of the stage. I would like to introduce Dean Karen Brooks Cathcart. Thank you, Vice President McMahon. Governor Kleinschmidt, it is my pleasure to present the recipients of Ontario College Certificates, Ontario College Diplomas, and Awards in Personal Support Worker and Fitness and Health Promotion Programs. Graduates of the Personal Support Worker Program, Caitlin Anderson. Morgan Atwood. <laughs> Petra Awender. <laughs> Heather Brinklow. Ashley Brown. <laughs> Chantel Brown. Chantel is the recipient of the local 175 UFCW Health Office and Professional Employees Award for Proficiency in Studies and Clinical Practice. <laughs> Kristen Christie. Jennifer Clark. Cassandra Clement. Jessica Ferris. Tabitha Gardner. Justin Goodwin. Angela Hurley. Kayla Hines Mackey. Leah LeBeau. <laughs> Melody Leland.
Sheena Noss. Jessica Pepin. Tracy Priest. Dylan Robinson. Samantha Robinson. <laughs> Margaret Sliwa. Margaret is the recipient of the Barbara Siebert Floyd Award for Academic Achievement in the Personal Support Worker Program. Amy Smith. <laughs> Amber Soul. Layla Sanjak. Saint-Jacques. <laughs> Caitlin Story. <laughs> Catherine Thompson. Lindsay Vallier. <laughs> Jessica Wilkinson. <laughs> Brenda Witherall. Congratulations to the graduates of the Personal Support Worker Program. <laughs> graduates of the Fitness and Health Promotion Program. Crystal Casabo. Shonda Hazel, Dean's List. Shonda is the recipient of the Fitness and Health Promotion Faculty Award presented for outstanding academic achievement in the Fitness and Health Promotion Program. Sushi Patel. Viral Patel. <laughs> Brandon Peaver, Dean's List. <laughs> Justin Ray. Caitlin Saunders, Dean's List. <laughs> Zafar Shabad. <laughs> Jintu Suni.
Kimberly Ward. Congratulations to graduates of the Fitness and Health Promotion Program. <laughs> graduates of Recreation and Leisure Services Program, Brandon Barberstock. Sarah Coltman, Dean's List. Damone Donaldson. <laughs> Megan Droog, Dean's List. Megan is the recipient of the Recreation and Leisure Services Faculty Award for Outstanding Achievement in the Recreation and Leisure Services Program. Cole Jakes, Dean's List. Kaylee Wakeley. Jessica Yarrow, Dean's List. Congratulations to graduates of the Recreation and Leisure Services Program. And thank you, Governor Kleinschmidt. Governor Williams. It is my pleasure to present recipients of Ontario College diplomas and awards for paramedic and practical nursing programs. Paramedic program, Stephen Chan. Jeanette Floyd. Maria Johns. Andrew Mayer, Dean's List. Emily Myers, Dean's List. Emily is the recipient of the County of Lennox and Addington Ambulance and Emergency Services Award for a graduating student who has de demonstrated the attribute of excellence in the practical component of the paramedic diploma program. Kyle Prentice. Kyle is the recipient of the Halliburton County Emergency Medical Services Award for a graduating student who has been recognized for most improvement on demonstrated skills in the paramedic diploma program. Nathan Putnam. Ethan Vandenberg. Gabriel Yanez. Congratulations to graduates of the paramedic program. Graduates of the Practical Nursing Program, Mina Ad Ahmadzai. <laughs> 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 
Amanda Allen, Dean's List. James Baker. James is the recipient of the Practical Nursing Proficiency Award for Scholastic Achievement in the Practical Nursing Program donated by Elsevier Science Canada. Larissa Baker. Amanda Bastian. Helen Best. <laughs> Haley Blair. <laughs> Marley Blakely. Jennifer Boulding. Miranda Byford, Dean's List. Miranda is the recipient of the Audrey Williams Practical Nursing Award for Academic Proficiency in the Practical Nursing Program. Desiree Carl. Desiree is the recipient of the Practical Nursing Proficiency Award for Scholastic Achievement in the Practical Nursing Program donated by the Trent Valley Lodge Nursing Home. Lindsay Carmichael. Brianne Carrier. <laughs> Brittany Kochek. Casey Cooney. <laughs> Jordan Craigs. <laughs> Carly Dunbreeze. Sarah Dewey. <laughs> Peter Edwards, Dean's List. Kristen Fisher. Rebecca Flores. Holden Fraser.
Lindsay Gibson. Sandra Gomes. Miranda Hodgson. Kirsten Hovinga. Amanda Jones, Dean's List. Amanda Kinzel. Kathleen Kloos. Kathleen is the recipient of the Practical Nursing Proficiency Award for scholastic achievement in the practical nursing program donated by Quinty Healthcare Corporation Board of Directors. Amanda Koistra. <laughs> Hilary Legasic. Becky Marsolis. Christina McIntosh. Melissa McLaren, Dean's List. Melissa is the recipient of the Registered Practical Nurses Association of Ontario Award for overall excellence and strong leadership ability. Sherry Metcalf. Marissa Milkey. Ashley Miller, Dean's List. Amy Parks, Dean's List. Megan Patterson. Laura Perry, Dean's List. Charmaine Rittenhouse. Kristen Ross, Dean's List. Holly Saliga. Crystal Singh. Yeah. 
Chantel Slaughter. Taylor Smith. Kimberly Snyder. Yoon Jong Song, Dean's List. Yoon is the recipient of the local 175 UFCW Health Office and Professional Division Award for proficiency in studies and clinical practice in the practical nursing program. Jennifer Stevens, Dean's List. Jennifer is the recipient of the Audrey Williams Practical Nursing Award for academic proficiency in the practical nursing program. Shirley Stevenson, Dean's List. Jennifer Thibodeau, Dean's List. <coughs> Caitlin Tracy. Brittany Walker. Alana Wycott. Congratulations to graduates of the Practical Nursing Program. And thank you, Governor Williams. Governor Dockrell, it is my pleasure to present recipients of Ontario College Diplomas and Awards in Community and Justice Services, Customs Border Services, and Investigation and Protection Studies. Graduates of Community and Justice Services Program, Corey Arsenal. Kelsey Bandy, Dean's List. <laughs> Taylor Bennett. <laughs> Jamie Lynn Boudreaux, Dean's List. April Brandt, Dean's List. <laughs> Cody Brown, Dean's List. <laughs> Marley Carr. Christopher Champagne, Dean's List. <laughs> Samantha Clement. <laughs> Sarah Cole, Dean's List. Sarah is the recipient of the Community and Justice Services Faculty Award for superior attitude, academics, and aptitude, and, as you may recall, the recipient of the Governor General's Academic Award for a graduating stu student with the highest academic average at Loyalist College. Jillian Cook, Dean's List.
Patricia Corkery, Dean's List. Albert Cormier. Mackenzie Curtis. Angela Dunn Simmons. Shauna Ewing. Amanda Fagg. Renee Foley. Tracy Grow, Dean's List. James Harrison, Dean's List. Craig Helmer. Dakota Holgate. Caitlin Hallman, Dean's List. Ashley Horner. Jamie Lynn Jack. Leanne Jenkins, Dean's List. Kayla Cummins, Dean's List. Chantal LaRue. Colin Linder, Dean's List. Sarah Luyenga, Dean's List. Leanne Lowry. Jerry McGee, Dean's List. <laughs> Brittany Miracle, Dean's List. <laughs> Tiffany Mason, Dean's List. Jose Heek Mena. <laughs> Eric Miller, Dean's List. Eric is the recipient of the Community and Justice Services Faculty Award for Superior Attitude, Academics, and Aptitude. Gareth Miller. Alexandra Moore, Dean's List. <laughs> Lindsay Moore. Sean Morden, Dean's List.
Michelle Pappas, Dean's List. Danielle Probst, Dean's List. Sarah Reed, Dean's List. Joseph Roblin. Ariana Roth. Melis Rutterham. David Smith. Jacqueline Smith. Jody Tate, Dean's List. Megan Vautier. Garrett Voss. Morgan Wilkinson. Jessica Yaumans. Brianne Young. David Young. Congratulations to the graduates of the Community Justice Services Program. Graduates of the Customs Border Services Program, Arthur Andrzejewski. Keshen Archibald, Dean's List. Dalvir Badesha. Delvere is the recipient of the Livingston International Academic Award for Outstanding Achievement, Academic Achievement in the Customs Border Services Program. Yang Bull. Kimberly Bauman. Tina Briere, Dean's List. <laughs> Shannon Carbino, Dean's List. <laughs> Sherry Fisher, Dean's List.
Martine Gauvin. Jeffrey Green, Dean's List. Manpreet Gruel. Erica Lozon. Ronald Lehman. Ronald is the recipient of the Customs Border Services Faculty Award for Superior Attitude, Academics, and Aptitude. Michael McDonald, Dean's List. Caitlin Mallory, Dean's List. Braden Morasuti. Nav Nijar. Matthew Palmer. Amanda Pendleton. Jacob Steele. Ryan Wadden, Dean's List. <laughs> Brett Weldon. Congratulations to our graduates of the Customs Border Services Program. Graduates of Investigation and Protection Studies, Michael Bartman. Zachary Breyer. Rachel Campbell, Dean's List. Morgan Carr. Lawrence Cotton, Dean's List. Jeremy Dowswell, Dean's List. Jeremy is the recipient of the Investigation and Protection Studies Faculty Award for superior attitude, academics, and aptitude. Natasha Dragoon Estrada, Dean's List. Natasha is the recipient of the Bob Thomas Corporate Security Award for overall academic proficiency, leadership, and citizenship. Cassandra Eplett, Dean's List. Megan Jessup McHugh, Dean's List. Robert Jones. Ryan Klatt, Dean's List.
Ryan is the recipient of the CanPro King Reed David Quinnell Memorial Award for a student of the Protection, Security and Investigation Program who best exemplifies the qualities and characteristics of Mr. David Quinnell by displaying superior security technology knowledge and understanding. Cassandra Laflamme. <laughs> Beverly LeClaire, Dean's List. Christopher Lee, Dean's List. Logan McMillan. <laughs> Ryan McCooey. Ryan McCutcheon. I don't think so. Oh. It changed now. Sylvia Miniacci. Zach McKee. Dylan Mountney. Katarina Musso, Dean's List. Zachary Nicholas, Dean's List. <laughs> Samantha Price Rodriguez, Dean's List. Chris Reed, Dean's List. Richard Ryu. <laughs> Samantha Robinson, Dean's List. Kendra Lynn Rushlow. Davis Sheil Raycroft. <laughs> Joseph Smith, Dean's List. Matthew Topp. Tiana Werner. <laughs> Amy Warner. Congratulations to the graduates of Investigation and Protection Studies. And thank you, Governor Doctor.
Governor McLeod, it is my pleasure to present the recipients of Ontario College Diplomas and Awards in Paralegal and Police Foundations programs. Paralegal program graduates, Janice Benjamin, Dean's List. <laughs> Marie Pierre Cardin, Dean's List. Marie Pierre is the recipient of the Prosecutors Association of Ontario Award for a graduating student in the paralegal program who exemplifies the ethics and ideals of justice by demonstrating excellence in advocacy. Madeline Carr, Dean's List. Allison Cousins. Chantelle Corlett, Dean's List. Antonella Del Sordo, Dean's List. Roger Dinner. John Farrell. Elizabeth Fawcett, Dean's List. Jacqueline Goodman. <laughs> Brett Gregg, Dean's List. <laughs> Krista Hoselton. Joshua Lovey. Yeah. Katie Lucas, Dean's List. Yeah. Brian Mulcaster, Dean's List. Brian is the recipient of the Paralegal Program Faculty Award for superior attitude, academics, and aptitude. Alyssa O'Connell and Company, Dean's List. Nathan Prato. Kirsten Williams, Dean's List. Rachel Wilson. Congratulations to graduates of the paralegal program. Graduates of Police Foundations Program, Alexandra Brandt, Dean's List. Sierra Colley, Dean's List. Sierra is the recipient of the Police Foundations Physical Fitness Award 
for a female graduate with an outstanding overall score on the physical fitness test battery. Adrian Chapman, Dean's List. Logan Cole. Paulette Corrigan, Dean's List. <laughs> Kristen Curtis, Dean's List. <laughs> Justin DeHaan, Dean's List. Justin is the recipient of the Police Foundation's Physical Fitness Award for a male graduate with an outstanding overall score on the Physical Fitness Test Battery. Michael Dreistra, Dean's List. Brittany Fargi. Cassandra Getz. Matthew Harding. Lauren LaCroix. Taylor McRae. <laughs> Jessica McMurder, Dean's List. Brandon Mouncey. Brandon is the recipient of the Police Foundation's Physical Fitness Award for a male graduate with an outstanding overall score on the Physical Fitness Test Battery. <laughs> Jacob Parks, Dean's List. Jacob is the recipient of the Police Foundation's Physical Fitness Award for a male graduate with an outstanding overall score on the Physical Fitness Test Battery. Garrett Richards, Dean's List. <laughs> Reginald St. Dick, Dean's List. <laughs> Alva Ann Simpson. Alva Ann is a recipient of the Police Foundation's Physical Fitness Award for a female graduate with an outstanding overall score on the Physical Fitness Test Battery. Very physically fit group that we're graduating today. <laughs> Stefan Smelski, Dean's List. Yeah. Yeah. Yvonne Steele, Dean's List. Connor Sullivan, Dean's List. Connor is also a recipient of the Police Foundation's Physical Fitness Award for a male graduate with an outstanding overall score on the Physical Fitness Test Battery. Connor Tate, Dean's List. Connor Tate, also a recipient of Police Foundation's Physical Fitness Award for a male graduate with an outstanding overall score on the Physical Fitness Test Battery. Scott Tinsley, Dean's List. Scott also shares Police Foundation's Physical Fitness Award for a male graduate with an outstanding overall score on the Physical Fitness Test Battery. Drew Wallace. Kaylin Wilkinson, Dean's List.
Joshua Woodcock, Dean's List. Joshua is recipient of the Belleville Community Policing Award for exceptional contribution to Belleville Community Policing by a graduating student of the Police Foundations program. Kristen York, Dean's List. Kristen is also a recipient of the Police Foundation's Physical Fitness Award for a female graduate with an outstanding overall score on the Physical Fitness Test Battery. Koshin Young, Dean's List. Koshin is the recipient of the Police Foundation's Faculty Award for Superior Attitude, Academics and Aptitude and a Police Foundation's Physical Fitness Award for a male graduate with an outstanding overall score on the Physical Fitness Test Battery. Congratulations to our graduates of the Police Foundation's program. Thank you, Governor McLeod. This concludes the conferring of Ontario College certificates and diplomas for the School of Health, Human and Justice Studies. Congratulations to our graduates. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, please join me in congratulating all of the graduates of 2013. Chair Wright. I presume that wasn't for me. But, uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to thank the staff from the registrar's office and the maintenance crew for all of their work in preparing for convocation. It really is a massive undertaking. They've been at it for weeks. They've done a great job. Thank you. I'd, uh, I'd also like to thank our string duo, Marion Stratton and Linda Minty, and of course, our piper, Charlie Orr from Eight Wing Pipes and Drums. You're, uh, you're all invited to join us for a reception in the Parrot Center immediately following the ceremony. And as I mentioned this morning, anybody that wants to have their photo taken with me, I'll be there. <laughs> and now I officially declare Convocation 2013 closed. I'd ask that everyone please rise for the benediction, the singing of the Royal Anthem, and remain standing for the recessional. Thank you. I'd like to congratulate all of the graduates today. Thanks for letting me share in this special day with all of you. Congratulations on your success and a best of luck in your future endeavors. And now it is time to party and to celebrate. So please have fun today. There you go, yeah. <laughs> Pastor Rob said it's okay, just be safe. <laughs> and on those fine notes, let's pray. <laughs> Creator of all humanity, may the destiny you have placed before us as educated women and men take root within us. May you who have graduated today share your knowledge for the benefit of others and for our entire world. May your understanding of life be broadened and enriched. May your imagination be touched with new visions that never see the possibility, that never end, pardon me, that never see the possibility of service that always see the possibility of service and stewardship. Keep us from discouragement by providing a beacon of life and hope in even the darkest hours. May the spirit encompassing all faiths be with each one of you, guiding your hearts and minds and giving you courage and purpose on the journey ahead. Amen.
God save our gracious Queen, long live our noble Queen, God save the Queen. Send her victorious, happy and glorious, long to reign over us, God save 